Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Black History is American History interview. Today, we have Clada Owens. Clada, I know you're working as a client success manager, working with clients across the U.S. to design leadership and technology strategies to enhance corporate culture and employee engagement. I know in talking, you and I talked about how you grew up in the city of Rochester. You went to Fairport High School as part of the Urban Suburban Program. And then you went on to college at the University of Albany, majoring in both business and Spanish language. Before we dig into the interview, is there anything else that you would want people to know about you before we start to chat? I am super passionate about traveling. I've actually been to 26 countries. My goal is to get to 30 before 30. I have three years left, and so I'm hoping to make it there. All right. Well, let's hope you can get back on planes and go places so you can hit your goal. (laughs) Okay, so let's start with high school. Um, What was it like for you? You know, you grew up in the city and all of a sudden you're going to high school in Fairport. What was that like for you? Yeah, um, it was hard. (laughs) It was definitely different, different than anything I had ever experienced before. Um, I think the best way to explain it would be to say that it was a strange change for me to kind of adapt to. It's interesting being the only one who looks like you Mm -hmm. um, and also has the same experiences that you had. And I think that going to a new high school in general is hard. Um, High school is one of those weird times where we're awkward. We're trying to figure out who we are. You know, everything seems like it's the end of the world. But then you add in the complexity of um, trying to figure out your own identity amidst a ton of other people who have different identities that are than you that are very different than what you're used to. Um, Yeah, it was definitely a difficult journey for me. Yeah, it sounds like it for sure. Um, Were there things that people did that made you feel less welcome? It's high school. People are mean. (laughs) I think that that's the lighthearted way of putting it. Um, Yes, there were things that people did that made me feel unwelcome. I think a lot of it had to do with pointing out the differences. Um, And I think a lot of times it was not intentional. You know, I think of so many experiences that I had in high school where people are joking, you know, you're passive, you're thinking you're funny. And maybe you're making light of a situation because it's new to you and you don't know how to feel. But there were so many times where my differences were put front and center. Mm -hmm. um, And I had a feeling of my blackness wasn't good enough Mm -hmm. and that I was always never going to be good enough. And that was certainly something that was really difficult for me to get through. And to be completely honest, it's something that still impacts me to this day. Um, I do think that my high school experience defined me in a lot of ways and, and has made me who I am today. And unfortunately, a lot of it had to do with the things that people did to make me feel unwelcome. Okay. So as a white person, I think I have a question, a follow-up question. What are, can you give me an example of things that people would say? You said they were kind of being joking, but it was pointing out your differences in ways that um, made you feel unwelcome. Can you give me an example of what that would sound like? Yeah, I would say saying anything and then adding for a black person at the end of the sentence. So you're really pretty for a black person. You're really smart for a black person. You're really slow. I thought black people are supposed to be fast. <laughs> um, and then, of course, there's the other side of it where, oh, you're the whitest black person I know, or you talk so white, or you're an Oreo. Mm-hmm. None of those things are very nice to say. Um, And none of those things make you feel good about yourself. So it just, those are the kind of of things people would say that would just point out the fact that there was a difference. Like if I said that, all it does is point out the difference between you and me. Absolutely. And then also it it made me feel as though um, it wasn't a good thing to be black and to be who I was. And once again, that I wasn't good enough as I 
was. And that's something that was really hard um, to kind of navigate. And I think it's hard for anyone, you know, everyone wants to feel good enough and everyone wants to feel like they can show up and be their true authentic self and, and be appreciated for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. So then what advice do you have for students or for staff in the school to make fee people feel welcome, to be more welcoming? Um, than the experience you may have had? Yeah, I would say embrace each other's differences. I think it's a beautiful thing that we live in a world where we're surrounded by so many people that come from different backgrounds, different cultures, that look different, that speak different. And there's so much beauty in embracing all of that. And I think um, that's one of the reasons I love to travel so much is because I get to experience all of that. And I, I know how much joy... Um, really diving in and embracing differences has brought me and I feel as though if other people took that same approach, um, we would really be in a different place. And I think another thing that you can certainly do to make someone feel really welcome is let them feel seen and heard as they are. Um, you know, don't force people to fit this category of what you envision them or, or what you think they should be. I think everyone is a unique individual and there's really something powerful about being able to show up, go to school every day and be accepted for who you are, um, even if who you are is different than someone else in the room. I have a follow-up question, Kata. So let's say that I'm I'm working with or I'm in school with someone who has an accent, for example, and I'm a curious person and I want to know more about that. Do you think there's a way for me to ask those questions, engage in that curiosity without making them feel different or unusual in that circumstance? Absolutely. And, and I think that it's important to be curious um, because I don't want to, you know, mislead anyone or add any type of confusion because while a lot of my experiences that were negative were people in fact pointing out my differences but I would say that it was because they were being pointed out in a negative way whereas if someone asked me instead questions about my upbringing and about how I grew up and about why I am the way I am and my experiences, um, I would be so eager to share. And I think anyone feels that way because everyone wants people to know them for who they are and their experiences. So I think all you have to do is, is even just think about how you would want to be asked. If there was something that was different about you, how could you ask someone you know, a question and, and show that curiosity without making it a joke or without um, making it seem negative. Got it. So I might say, I'm curious about something. I wonder if you'd be willing to share. Can you tell me more about your accent? I mean, you don't have one, but you know what I'm getting at. That it could, I could make it about curiosity and I could let them know that they don't have to tell me if they don't want to, but then ask the question. Absolutely. Makes sense. Great. Thanks, Clara. Okay, so um, next, I'm curious, were there teachers or mentors during your high school experience that supported your development that really helped you in that journey? Yeah. So like I said, high school was kind of hard for me. And one of the biggest relationships I gained from that experience was actually through my guidance counselor um, in, in meeting with her regularly and, and really kind of using her as a place where I can kind of express how I was feeling, um, but also get the guidance I needed. I didn't know where I wanted to go to college. I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. I didn't know what options I had. So having that support system um, to not only support me in achieving my goals, but then also to be there to just listen to me mm -hmm. and hear about my experience and be curious about my experience and also ways to make my experience better was really powerful to me. So I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, I really admire, you know, I think we can all relate to not feeling a sense of belonging at that time in our lives, but I really admire how you found someone you could reach out to and get that support from. Um, so as this is Black History Month, who are some of the Black Americans from the past or present that inspired you and why? Yeah, so I'm going to talk present, especially 
given the recent election um, that we've had, and honestly, right now, I'm just feeling so overwhelmingly inspired by, of course, our first woman vice president, um, who's also Black. And Kamala Harris is definitely someone who I look towards and I'm excited to see as a leader. Um, But then also just knowing what that means for the country and breaking all of these glass ceilings. But then yesterday, I have a new hero in Amanda Gorman, who was the 22-year-old Harvard graduate who recited the poem that was just so inspirational and so beautiful and just such a symbol of hope, um, especially from someone who's so young and, and it's just so empowering. So they're my heroes right now. That's fabulous. It's always great to find new heroes. Mm -hmm. Um, so in regards to your career, Um, What advice do you have for students, especially students of color, that are interested in going into business or professional services as a as a career? Yeah, Um, well, my advice, you know, to anyone is always, you know, put your heart into it and follow your passions, Um, work hard and do the work to also find a business and a company that's right for you and that embraces you for who you are. I think it's important to know that there's going to be a lot of times where you may be the only one that looks like you in the room and that's okay. Um, And if anything, that's powerful and don't ever not speak up because of that. Um, I think that that's one of the great things about where we are as society today is it's important for us to have diversity in every room and in every business and in every role. So I think there's a real opportunity to just go for it, follow your passions and be okay with being different, but also never letting that shelter you and being okay with speaking up as well. Wonderful. Well, on the note of speaking up, thanks so much, Clara, for your time. Thanks for allowing us to interview you on behalf of our um, Black History is American History program for the PTSA. Wonderful to speak with you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you.